Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. So, is it Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. I was guided to come on and answer some questions. My intention is to answer questions. My guide said, go live and answer humanity's questions. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Hello, hello, hi everyone. I want to answer your questions. I have a, a quick, a quick update um, on what's happening with our, who, with our bodies right now. Uh, I want to share it with you. Quick message. So, our bodies are the ones that are shifting into higher frequencies. Yeah, there's massive ascension symptoms. Our bodies is what is ascending. So you and I are, we already are higher states of consciousness, right? Um, we are whatever you want to call it, a soul, a spirit, an angel, a light being, a galactic being, a consciousness, right? We, as that consciousness, are not ascending. The body's ascending. The body is shifting into higher states or, yeah, higher frequencies, allowing us to awaken into who we have always been. Who we have always been. Our wholeness, our completeness, our sovereignty. The understanding that we have free will, that we have choice, um, that we are free, that we are not victims, right? All of these things that we're learning, we have always been prior to incarnating. And that the body is so dense, it's so physical, it's so heavy that to bring our light into it and to stay aligned with our light is almost impossible, which is why we have amnesia. Because it is almost impossible to drop into this density. It's like if somebody were to put a huge blank, heavy, heavy blanket over you in a dark room. And there's a book in there, right? And you're like, okay, read the book. And you're like, I can't read the book. It's too dark, you know, too bad, right? That's how it is in the physical body. Sorry, this is what it's like. It's dense. As the body continues to hold more light, shifting into higher frequencies, the lights turn on. We start to activate. We start to remember. We start to experience ourselves in higher states of consciousness. We have access to higher states of consciousness, which is what's happening, right? Which is allowing ourselves to exit out of this matrix, exit out of the programs, exit out of the mind control, exit out of the power struggles, exit out of the manipulation, exit out of the trauma bonds, exit out of all of these things that we're exiting out of. But here's what's happening right now for a lot of us in this now moment with our physical bodies. What's happening right now is that the body, whoo, your guys' physical bodies are shifting really fast. God bless you all, but your bodies are shifting really fast. Part of the reason this shift is happening right now, so Ascension is a really delicate sort of experience. It needs to be really honored because if you receive too much light too fast, you will short circuit your entire physicality. You'll go into a psychosis. You, your body won't be able to handle it. So it's been done in this really natural, slow progression. Here's what I got today. For whatever reason, I don't know what's coming, okay? But the last couple of weeks, we have been receiving massive accelerations in light frequencies inside of our bodies or more light is being acclimated and anchored into our bodies. So there's more light spinning, the frequencies are increasing, so that we can be prepared to be able to handle what's coming. And what do I mean when I say, or what do my guides mean when they say handle what's coming? Sorry, I have a hair on my arm. Handle what's coming. Our role as warriors of light, 
star seeds, light workers, way showers, whatever you want to call it. Our role is to stand in the middle of it, stand in the midst of it, stand in the storm and navigate it from a sovereign field. And the easiest way to navigate yourself from a sovereign field, meaning sovereignty, is to be holding higher states of consciousness. Then you're like, dude, I've got this. Stand my ground, speak my truth, open my heart, teach from compassion and empathy, teach from a neutral perspective or be in a neutral perspective, understanding all the different truths, know where we're going, higher perspective, now moment state, choice, free will, creation, all of that good stuff, right? That we're practicing. When you're holding higher states, when your body's vibrating in a really high frequency, that's second nature. They, meaning the systems that we're collapsing, they can throw anything at you and you're nailing it. You're like, got this, I'm a rock star, what's next, right? So we have all been receiving upgrades these last couple of weeks on an energetic level to the body in order to prepare us to stand in what may be coming down the chute. I don't know what it is. My guides never tell me what it is. But it probably has something to do with our rights. Probably has something to do with freedom. Probably has something to do with free speech. Probably has something to do with our health and our bodies, right? Probably has to do with all of that. Sovereignty. When we watch this, these external systems try to take away our sovereignty by creating more fear, control, and manipulation, it's sort of like this joke, right? Because you kind of watch and you're like, wow, you're, you're really trying to stop the flow of my evolution. That's ridiculous. These systems that we're collapsing are, are very, very intelligent systems. They know exactly what they're doing and they know exactly what we're doing. And guess what they're trying to do? Keep you subdued, keep you out of sovereignty, keep you out of alignment keep you in fear, right? Keep you in silence, keep you in control, keep you out of body. So we've gotten, we got a little kick in the butt sort of assistance the last couple of weeks. So if you have been feeling uh, like a massive dark night of the soul, like you kind of cocooned in and just like shrunk down and was like, what the freak has, have I been experiencing, right? Um, if you have been feeling uh, really intense emotions, yep. If you've been crying out of, for no apparent reason or there is a reason for it, yep. If you have this anger inside of you where you're like, what the freak is this? Yep. If you have irritability in a way that you have never had it before, yes. If you literally are crawling out of your skin, welcome. If you, if your body feels exhausted, heavy, um, achy, Yep. These are all signs. These are all symptoms that we've been feeling, but right now it's like you're feeling all of them in one now moment, right? If you're having a hard time sleeping. Yep. What else are we feeling? Um, massive headaches, right? A lot of you are going to probably, or have been feeling huge headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness in a way that you haven't, right? How not able to stay in the body, um, not able to stay grounded, um, the body is literally being vacuumed clean or vacuumed cleaner, right? So it's all, oh, and ps.com. We are also purging from the collective. So we're purging all that shadow ourselves in our bodies. And so it's, we're digesting it. And because we've never done this before, we think it's ours 
And then we judge ourselves and then we attach to it and then we make it this big deal and then we have the storyline around it and then three days later we're like, oh, maybe I'll just let it finally flow through me, right? It's never been yours. And it doesn't matter if it's yours or if it's the collective's. The key here is to recognize that your body is being upgraded in a massive way right now. And your body is energy and your body is continuing to shift into higher states of consciousness, higher frequencies of light, how can you make this as easy as possible for you? Because there is going to be another now moment a couple months from now where we were three months, four months, five months, six months, where, where we are going to be able to stand in sovereignty no matter what is thrown at us. We are going to have to like, what's it called? What's that dance called where you like chuck and jive, you know? We're going to be chucking and jiving around what is being thrown at us for months because we are breaking out of old systems based on fear, mind control, manipulation, greed. We're stepping out of those systems and we're stepping into systems that are based on unity, compassion, love, empathy, free will, choice, freedom, free speech, all those great things. And we can't do it successfully or as quickly if we are perpetuating that fear, control, manipulation. If we're perpetuating it by playing in it. For instance, right, censorship is getting really crazy for those of us that are speaking truth, right? It's getting really nuts. And so if you combat that behavior, that oppressive behavior that's coming at us, if we combat it with F you, F you, F you, we're just giving them what they want. If you combat it from, oh, that's really cute. You're trying to take away my sovereignty. You don't know who I am. I don't think you understand. I'm a being of light. If I had this physical form and I understand a lot more than you do, because you're not awake yet to what's happening here. And I know that no matter what you throw at me, I am going to shake and jive around it in whatever way I need to in order to continue to stand in my sovereignty. I'm not going to flip them off. I'm not going to tell them to F off. I'm not going to get mad at them. The louder they get, the better it is for us because more humans wake up. The more they try to take away our sovereignty, the more people are going to say, huh, maybe I am sovereign because they sure are getting loud trying to take away my sovereignty. Why are they so intent on taking away and controlling more and more of us? Why is it getting almost ridiculous, the type of control they're trying to have over us? Just a question, but it's getting a little crazy. Why? Why is it getting more intense? When you're in an abusive relationship, I've been in one. When you're in an abusive relationship and you start to try to get out of it, what happens? The abuser gets louder. They try all their tactics that worked for the last I don't know, however long you were with them. And this abuser could be a friend. It could be a relationship, a romantic relationship. It could be a parent. It could be a teacher. It could be a religious figure. But if you've been in an abusive relationship, and by the way, every human has basically been in an abusive relationship if they've been connected to the media or the government or many other systems. We just don't realize that it's been abusive. But in your own personal abusive relationship, what happens is when you start to step out and get away, when you start to say, I'm not going to stay with you any longer, I'm not going to be in this with you any longer, there's these little steps they take. They try to, they try to placate things, make it all better. Everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be great. It's going to be so great. Just stay. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to show you how great it's going to be. Everything's great. Don't worry about it. And then what they do is they realize it's not working. So then they start manipulating you. 
They start manipulating you. You're never going to find someone else. You're not good enough. You can't do it on your own. Let me tell you how to do it. Let me show you what's, what, what you need to do. Let me take care of you. I'm going to love you the best. I'm going to take care of you the best. You only need me. You don't need anyone else. You don't need to listen to anyone else. You've never had to. Just listen to me. I've always taken care of you. I love you. It gets louder. It gets louder and louder and louder. And it's really, really difficult for humans to wrap their head around this. I don't know why this is where the conversation is going right now. I guess it's what needs to be talked about. But it's very difficult for humans to wrap their heads around the fact that there are figures in place that they love and that they respect and that they honor that have been unconsciously or consciously abusing them. Abusing meaning using their power to control and manipulate. Not physically abuse or sexually abuse, but abuse by using power, control, manipulation, and fear to control you. We don't understand what it feels like to have the type of control that these humans have. So when you say to yourself, why would they want that? Why do they want more money? Why are they so greedy? Why do they want control? Why do they want to manipulate? You're never going to be able to understand because you're not them. It won't make sense to you. It's almost impossible for us to put ourselves in their shoes and to try to grasp what that reality looks like. But it isn't about them. It's about the consciousness they're holding in their bodies. It's the consciousness they're holding in their bodies. That's what we are transmuting. That's all. They're just the vessels that are playing that out that consciousness, just like we're holding higher states of consciousness, right? We're holding more compassion and empathy, more unity, more, um, more grace, more expansion, more freedom, more free will. And when we hold those, that's what emanates out into the, the collective. So you got humans that are holding those lower consciousnesses. Those are the lower consciousnesses that we are literally transmuting. It's not a bad thing. It's great that it's getting louder. I cheer it on. I actually look forward to seeing what's next. This is, this is how you wake humanity up. This is how you do it. It's just that if you're already awake, it kind of sucks. Because you have to be awake through it. You know, you have to, you have to feel it and watch it. So back to the original message, which is the body being accelerated right now. Your body is re it's actually really exciting because you're going to find yourself. So pay attention, pay attention to what you're feeling in your body, not just the emotions or the thoughts and the beliefs, but pay attention to like what's happening on an energetic, on an energetic level. Um, how fast are you moving up and down that emotional ladder? How present are you? How observant are you in every now, right? Like start to be, start to get really even more clear on what's happening. Stop living your life from this sort of like, um, busy state, doing, 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 and really start slowing down. Even if you're busy, start slowing down and honoring what you're going through instead of beating yourself up, honoring what you're going through. Because we tend to lean towards the beat ourselves up area, right? So 
how about we not try doing that? And how about we cheer ourselves on? How about we pay attention to everything we're feeling in our body, recognizing that it is always moving us into higher frequencies? Right? I don't know why we all, I don't know why humanity, or many, many humans, were given this sort of like booster of, of upgrade, um, but it's really freaking exciting. Pay attention to your sovereignty, you guys. Pay attention to sovereignty when you're in a store, when you're with other people, when you're with your family members. And what do I mean when I say pay attention to sovereignty? I mean, I mean, pay attention Hold on a second. Um, I got to go. Pay attention to... Sovereignty is paying attention to... Um, pay, sorry, I got distracted. Paying attention to your truth. Paying attention to discernment. Discerning, 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 discerning. What is mine? What is mine? What is mine? What is mine? Sovereignty is taking your eyes from the external and turning your eyes in over and over and over. This is all about me. This is all about me. This is all about me. Sovereignty is understanding that you're an energetic being with an energetic field. And you are constantly tapping into external energies. That's it. You feel it. You experience it. Onward and upward. Sovereignty is recognizing that you are the only one that is in control of how you think, feel, be. You're the only one in control. That's sovereignty. Nobody is doing anything to you. That's sovereignty. Knowing that even in the most oppressed moments, the most oppressed states that we may feel, We're sovereign. You dropped into the body to be this sovereign being in the midst of the chaos. Sovereignty is staying present as much as possible, not looking at the past or the future. That's sovereignty. There's no victimhood. Feeling your energy, feeling your light, feeling your frequency. Bringing all the focus back to you. Choosing over and over and over and over again what you want. What do you want? Detaching from every emotion. While you feel every emotion. You cannot get through this without feeling. So the faster you can detach from every single emotion without, without judging it, the easier this is going to be. Anger is bad. Love is good. Rage is bad. Joy is good. No. It's all just consciousness. Period. When you are in a quantum field, which you all are, and you recognize you're a quantum being, multidimensional being, you do not attach to any energy that's moving through your body. There's no attachment to it. It just is. If it feels good, it feels good. If it feels bad, it feels bad because we're in a dualistic sort of third dimensional field. So we have this sort of ability to weigh it out in our systems and our bodies. Stop judging and attaching. You will literally become free if you can practice that over and over again. I promise you. And a lot of you are going to find yourself in these states easier and easier and easier because your body's naturally holding higher states of consciousness. This is all very natural. We try really hard. You know, we, we read all the books, we learn all the tools, we take all the courses. We study, 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 and really, none of it matters because your body is going to naturally show you how to be in higher states of consciousness. We can practice. We can observe. But you'll be it when you're it. You'll feel it. And all of you have been upgraded. 
So pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention to your beliefs, pay attention to how you're framing everything. Pay attention to the programs that you're still paying attention to, the programming, the paradigms. Pay attention to what's getting louder and louder and louder and ask yourself, is this, tr is this, is this, whatever this is that's getting louder, is it taking away my sovereignty? Is it trying to take away my sovereignty? Which means, is it trying to tell me what to do? Is it trying to take away my voice? And remember, this is an abusive type of behavior, so it's going to be for your best good. It's manipulative. It's very manipulative. No, 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 we're doing this for you. We're doing this for you, not for us. We're not taking away your power, we're keeping you safe. We're not taking away your voice, we're keeping you safe. Hmm. Okay. Pretty sure that's an abusive, manipulative pattern. And it's getting louder. Thank God. Because we've been in these patterns since the moment we dropped into the body. We don't want to look at it, and I understand. But we've been in these patterns since the moment we dropped into the body. Unconscious. Now we're conscious. Many of us. Millions of us aren't. And so when you start to get conscious of it, it's very easy to see. It's very easy to look at. It's very easy to hear and watch. And then you're blown away. You're literally blown away by how obvious the control and the manipulation is. And it can make you sick to your stomach. Remember, it's not about that human. It's about the consciousness that human has chosen to experience in order for us to shift the entire human collective. So they're a part of it. Unconsciously, they're choosing to play that role so that we can all shift. They're not less than or better than, right? They're not less than you. They're not worse than you. They're not better than you. They're playing a role. Hard to hold that, but they are playing a role in this entire human collective shift. Somebody has to hold those consciousnesses so we can shift out of it. Somebody has to play that role. Somebody has to play the consciousnesses that we have to shift. Otherwise, we'll just be sitting in the sludge like, what's next? What are we supposed to, what do we do here? We have to see it. We have to feel it. We have to experience it. We have to go through it. Oh, there it is. That's what it is. Oh, that's greed. Oh, that's manipulation. Oh, that's mind control. Oh, that's fear. Got it. and have compassion and empathy for the humans that are unable to hold any of this. This is not easy to hold. These kind of trauma bonds that we have had with external systems are very, very deep and they're very, very ingrained in us. It's heavy and it's deep. So for us to get upset with humans and call them sheeple and call them ignorant and call them whatever names people call them, you're missing the point. These humans are literally doing the best they can with what they have. And they are in a third dimensional matrix. They are stuck in this massive mind control that many of us were stuck in not too long ago. The way you shift an entire human collective is you have compassion and empathy for what they are experiencing, no matter how angry and upset and how much they yell at you. That's how you shift it. Speak your truth, educate, yell it from the rooftops, but not from this perspective of what's wrong with you, you're so stupid, you can't see things, blah, 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 because you're not any better, you're not any higher, there's no... There's no leveling up of like, oh, here's the tears of humans. It's just holding different states of consciousness at different times. That's all. And you just have gone first in terms of stepping out of that matrix, those chains. That's it. 
this divide, this right, wrong, good, bad, I'm better than you, I'm worse than you, those whole things, that's a, it's a lot of wasted energy. Really, what we're here to do is hold that sovereign state as often as we can and navigate this from your, from you. What, how do you want to navigate this? Because none of us have been in this before. None of us have really experienced the intensity of what we're experiencing right now. None of us have done this before. So to say, how do we do it? I have no freaking idea. Never done it before. I'm just as brand new to this as you. So what feels right to you? How do you want to navigate it? All right. What, what do you, how are you going to navigate it? But what I do recommend or encourage is as you are learning how you're going to navigate this, because nothing's going to be going back to normal ever again. Life as we know it will never go back to the way it was. Let me remind you of something. When 9-11 happened, which was an opportunity for a massive amount of humans to wake up and they didn't. Totally okay. When 9-11 happened, have we ever gone back to normal at airports? We will never go back to a normal state after, uh, over, after what's happened. And it's, we don't want to. We don't want to go back. We can't go back. We're not holding that frequency as a collective. The collective can't go back. <laughs> We're free falling. Okay? The collective is free falling. Hold on. We got this, but we're free falling. And we're going to create new systems. We're going to create beautiful new systems. New systems that are going to that are going to be based in higher states of consciousness that aren't going to be inundated with fear and control and manipulation and greed. We're free falling into this heaven on earth. We're free falling into a unified field that we've always been in, but we forgot. So if you're attaching to some sort of going back to the way things were, I encourage you to surrender to the fact that none of us know what's going to be coming. And the more you can settle into, all right, I'm in the present moment, I'm on this ride, I'm free falling with the entire human collective and I'm gonna figure out how to navigate this by staying as present as possible because if I look in the future, I'm gonna freak the freak out. If I look in the past, I'm gonna freak out. So I'm gonna stay present. That's all you have. It's your greatest gift, presence your greatest greatest gift it is literally our greatest gift it's the secret spot because in the present moment you're free no matter what's happening you're gonna make it through you're all we're all gonna make it through we make it through this. We're rock stars. That's why we're here. That's why you're here in this body. You're going to have all of the breakdowns. You're going to have all of the temper tantrums. You're going to have all the anger and the rage and the sadness and the joy and the peace and all of it. You're going to have it all. But you're here for this. You incarnated for this. No matter what you think about yourself, no matter what your experiences have been or go are going to be, you came here for this moment. You came here to do this. You came here to watch this. You came here to experience this. And I'm going to remind you for the 18,000th time, we don't fail at this. We find ourselves in a, on a dimensional field with most of the entire human collective that is in a fifth dimensional frequency, fifth dimensional consciousness. It is an absolute. How we get there, cross our fingers, I don't know. We're getting there. It happens. You know that. 
I know that. And now we're in it and we have to go through it and we're crossing our fingers and we're holding our hands. We have our arms around each other's backs. We're crying sometimes. We're injured sometimes. We're jumping up and joy, up and up and down for joy sometimes. We're having it all. But we don't quit. And we don't lose hope. Right? We remember. We remember, we remember, we remember what we're doing here. We remember that our light, the light inside your body, the light of who you are, is what pulls the entire human collective forward. Your voice pulls the human collective forward. Your actions pull the human collective forward. Your beingness pulls the human collective forward. Do not let anyone tell you different. Ever. Ever. This is why you're here. And we have to be human and have all of our human experiences. And we get to manifest and create. And we get to have all of our physical symptoms of ascension. We get to have it all. But please, if there's anything you take away from this message, it's that we make it through this. We make it through this. And when we're on the other side, it will be a freaking story to tell. What is that story that you want to tell on the other side? Right? All right, I love you guys. I was going to take questions. I think that's why I came on was to answer questions. Um, I was going to answer questions. All right, let me answer a couple questions. Okay, so why would the guides not tell you what it is? The reason my guides don't tell me what is a, it, what may be coming and what we're preparing for is because there are there are many options or experiences that we could have so the way the guides or higher dimensional beings see it is it's almost like you're looking down at a game right and there's all these different options or opportunities depending upon how when you roll the dice maybe you're going to go three steps maybe you're going to go eight steps maybe you're going to go six steps and depending upon what step you take there's going to be a card you pull and then you pull that card and you have to go all the way to a different place or all of a sudden you have to pay this money right there's all of these options and opportunities for the human collective so for them they see all of these they don't know which one the human is going to walk down but as we get closer and closer to a probability of playing out, then it becomes more and more clear what the human collective is about to step into. And all of this is based on the frequency of the entire human collective, which is why it is so important for us to continue to hold higher states of consciousness a thousand times over. Because if you hold higher states of consciousness in your body, you are literally shifting the probability of what is going to happen with the human collective. Meaning if we hold higher states of consciousness, the probability of something in a little bit of a higher state is going to be the outcome. If we kind of let go and say, okay, just do whatever. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to give in and we're going to, we're going to get angry and rageful and, and fight and argue and do all these things, holding ourselves in lower state of consciousness. Then the timeline that's in a lower state of consciousness that may be really crunchy and uncomfortable is going to play out. Our frequency inside our bodies and the frequency of the entire human collective is constantly changing, constantly changing. There is no such thing as an absolute probability. Not in the quantum field. It's impossible. We can shift a reality just like that by shifting the frequency. So the guides never tell me. They have told me certain things that did, out, that did happen. 
And I think that is because when you, when the human collective clicks into a probability, if they get closer and closer to that probability, they click into it and then it becomes an absolute for however long, right? And then you, and then the human collective keeps going and it clicks into another probability. Clicking into it means it attaches based on its frequency and then there's an outcome. Here's the probability. There's like 17,000 probabilities. The human collective is going like this and a frequency connects to a probability and boom, it becomes that reality. Does that make sense? So there's all these probabilities. The guides are like, I don't know which one you guys are gonna hit, but whichever one it is, you guys need to have more, uh, <laughs> more frequency in your body. What do we do? when family members get angry with our views. So imagine a family member, your mom, getting angry. This is happening to millions of you guys. Your mom or your dad, your grandpa, your grandma, your sister, your brother, your loved one, your husband, your wife, I don't know, whoever it is. Here they are, energetic body. Here you are, energetic body. They are perhaps unconscious to how they are being. They're unconscious to the, the way they are expressing emotion. They're unconscious to a lot of things. No big deal. We've all been there. So they're going to respond from a very unconscious reactionary state. Okay. Your job is to respond from an awakened conscious state, which is, oh, I'm speaking truth not to change them, but to just speak my truth, what I believe. It's an energy that goes out. They react and respond based on the internal traumas within their bodies that they do not want to look at. So they have a reactionary response energetically that shoots right back to you. And this is where sovereignty comes in. Sovereignty says, that's not mine and I don't need to hold it, and I don't need to take it, and I can stand in my sovereign field honoring this person's experience. Wow, they're getting very angry. Wow, they didn't like what I just said. Hmm, okay. Feels a little uncomfortable hanging out. Feels uncomfortable to keep having conversation. I think I might stop. You are an awakened sovereign being and your responsibility is to assist the unawakened ones, not by telling them they're wrong or, hey, you need to wake up, but by honoring. You just honor it. You don't try to combat it with more. They are unconscious to what they're experiencing, the, the way they are being. So you're going to have an argument with an unconscious human. It's going to be a back and forth ping pong round exhausting you so you speak your truth over and over and over again when and if you want to but if you continue to speak your truth to somebody that initially gave you a response that was anger why are you going to continue to speak your truth if their response is not receptive to it the ego is going to say well i want to change i want to change their mind or i want to argue with them i want to prove them wrong i want to prove my point to them or i want to help them i want them to see things that's ego that's an egoic decision that's an egoic reason which is only going to create that back and forth ping pong they're not ready perhaps let them be especially if they have anger let them be honor them because I can guarantee you there will be another now moment, one year, six months, five years from now, where they will awaken and their response will not be anger. You are awakened. You have the ability to choose how you respond. Why are you responding? What are you feeling from the other person when you are, when you are responding or having a conversation? And are you continuing to ping pong with this argument and anger? Or are you going to say, wow, look, observe, they're angry. Look what they're doing. Look what they're feeling. You're not a victim to somebody that's angry. And your job isn't to fix someone that's angry. It's not your job either. 
right? You honor and just let them have their thing. It's not your job and it's not your fault. But that's where sovereignty becomes so challenging. How do you speak your truth when everyone around you wants to yell at you and get angry at you? You don't have to speak the truth, meaning you don't have to burst it out into the, into the ethers. You can just hold your truth until it's time and you feel ready to speak your truth. But it's all about the energetic exchange and it's all about being conscious and aware. And if this is a conscious human that's choosing to have that anger, I would debate whether they're conscious if they are responding from a, from a, from a very angry place. Usually that's trauma and usually that's triggered, right? If two conscious humans have completely different views on things and completely different opinions and truths and they're conscious, they can stand in a sovereign field and have a discussion. It's called sovereignty. It's called being an awakened human. It's called not being triggered, which means that you've cleared out a lot of trauma in your body. So somebody says something that you don't believe, you respond from an awakened higher state of consciousness. You agree to disagree. You honor free will. You honor sovereignty. You honor their frequency. That's what we are moving to. That's what we're moving into. Okay, one more question. If there's somebody you know that's suicidal, one of the things that you can do is, one of the things that I do when I receive information from someone that's suicidal is I listen, I honor, I put myself in their shoes, like it's really freaking tough. And then I remind them of why they're here. I speak to the being of light they are, not the human ego. I go deeper than the trauma and the pain and the suffering they're in. And I remind them of what they're doing here. And I remind them that they have free will, but that they are here for a reason. They are here for a reason. You know? Sorry, I'm just looking. It's hard to read the comp questions. I didn't know it was a new moon today. Is today a new moon? I'm not going to talk about that because I will get censored. Yes, all of the 4D cons will be fully removed, correct. Is it normal to feel annoyed by everyone right now? Yep, very normal, very, very normal. Okay, everyone's ascending, it's just a matter of consciously or unconsciously. And if you're unconsciously ascending, it's going to take a lot longer because you're not aware, you're not observing, you're not being present with it. Um, what do we do when we're feeling lost? What do you do when you're feeling lost? Stay, get present. Get present. What's happening in this now moment? What's happening in this now moment? Over and over again. What's happening in this now moment? When you feel lost, it's this feeling of, it, there's an anxiety. And um, it, it, a lot of times it has to do with desire or an attachment to something. When you feel lost, it's, um,
what are you attaching to or what are what 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 attachment or expectation do you have so go a little bit deeper and get very very present very very present presence and breath is everything for us right now everything for us presence breath and freaking just feeling whatever it is you want to feel Okay, I think we're done. I love you guys. Um, I love you, I love you, I love you. Is there any, one more question. One more question, I just lost that one. One more. Is the ascending the same with the rapture for Christians? I don't know what that means. Um, What can you do to deal with ascension symptoms? Stay present and give your body whatever it needs. Who is they, them? Well, the last time I talked about they and them, my internet got shut off. (laughs) Let's just say they're families. How can I stop pushing people away if I'm consciously ascending? I feel like people can't keep up and I end up being alone. That's a great one. How can I stop pushing people away? Well, I mean, the question, mermaid motions, are you pushing people away consciously because you're not, because you're not holding the same frequency so it just doesn't resonate? And, and in that, if that's the sense, I wouldn't say you're pushing people away. I would say that you are consciously, consciously choosing not to be with people that don't resonate, right? So there's nothing wrong with, with not having people in your life anymore if you don't resonate with them. When you start moving into higher states of consciousness, very few things stay the same. So your preferences for food changes, your preferences for exercise perhaps changes, your preference for in relationships change, your preference in where you want to live changes, your preference in how you communicate changes, your preference in how you hold your body changes, your entire physicality changes. Everything changes as you start holding higher states of consciousness. So your relationships are going to change. So there's nothing wrong with it. So I would reframe that instead of saying, um, pushing people away, as if you're doing something wrong, I would honor your, your, your choice. You know, a lot of times what happens is when we start choosing to no longer have people in our lives that don't hold the same frequencies and resonance, one, you are going to be alone perhaps, right? Because there's not as many awakened as there are unawakened. But the people that are, that have been in your life for a very long time and you're now saying, yeah, I'm going to go. I don't, I can't, I can't chill with you anymore. They're going to get angry at you. And they're gonna blame you. And they're gonna say, you're leaving me, right? There's something wrong with you. Why are you doing this? There's nothing wrong with our relationship, right? So it's, it can be very challenging. You can feel guilty. You can feel like you've done something wrong, um, that you shouldn't do this. You should figure out a way to be with them. You should figure out a way to make this work, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> being sovereign requires us sometimes to say, I have to honor my resonance and my resonance is saying that I can't be in this anymore. Now, I will say this. When you move into the, this, a different level of awareness and a different state of consciousness, you can be in relation with anyone regardless of their frequency. It doesn't matter because you are, you are really understanding sovereignty. Now, you're not going to necessarily choose to hang out with them all the time and go have pizza and go to the arcade, but you won't feel this need to no longer be connected. But that's a phase that we, we tap into later, right? If we're to look at kind of the phases of evolution, the phases of moving into higher states of consciousness, that's a phase that takes 
a little bit of time to step into. The, the first part of this is, oh, I don't like, this doesn't feel good anymore. You talk about a lot of stuff that I don't agree with or, you know, you when I'm with you, I feel a lot of anxiousness or stress or worry. I don't want this in my life, right? And so you put up a boundary, you speak your truth, and you say goodbye to certain people if you have the ability to. And there's may, there may be times where you come back. Listen, I had to say goodbye to a lot of people that I came back in and they came back into my life later. Meaning I had to, when I was going through a deep, deep, deep process of, 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 um, of growth, a deep growth a couple of years ago, you know, there were months and months and months I didn't talk to family members. Months. I had to exit out. I had to process what I was going through and what was happening. Friends that I couldn't associate with. And there are many that are back in my life now. But I had to honor what I felt. I had to honor what I needed. We have to allow ourselves that. So the use of the word pushing people away, that is... That's not what's happening. What's happening is that you are honoring your resonance. You are honoring your sovereignty and your frequency. And you are choosing what feels right for your highest good. That's what you're doing. And we practice that over and over and over again. And it feels, it can feel very lonely when you start to really awaken. Very lonely. But we're here. There's millions of us. We just have to figure out a new way of connecting and communicating until we find another way, until more people wake up. You know, there's millions upon millions of humans that are awake. There's just a larger percentage that are that are not necessarily in that same awakened state that you are. I hear you though. Trust me, I hear you. What else? It's very lonely. All right. I think we're done. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. And um, I'll see you next time. Be gentle with yourselves. Don't forget that your body has has and will continue to be massively upgraded so be gentle be gentle 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 with yourself remember that you agreed to be here remember that you're a rock star that you're navigating this in an amazing way that it's not easy it's not always easy many of us are going through a lot of things right now a lot of different things it takes a lot of courage to wake up every morning. It takes a lot of courage to wake up every morning and confront and step forward into your nows. It takes a lot of courage to start to practice sovereignty over and over and over again. Let me remind you, you're not doing this just for you or your kids or your family. You are doing this for humanity. And that may sound crazy, and you may be like, yeah, I don't think so, but I can promise you that you incarnated at this time for humanity and the earth, not for anything else. Everything else is second. Everything else is this, the icing on the cake. It's the, it's, the, it's the juice of the human experience the children, the relationships, all of that. You came here for humanity and the earth plane. That's why you're here. And no matter what you are going through in your human journey, you are navigating it like a badass warrior. And you get to have every emotion, thought, belief, and behavior, letting it move right through your body because it has never been who you are. It is not who you are. You're an amazing being of light that incarnated. I love you. Thanks for being here.